Hello everyone, welcome back. I wanted to share something really quick. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this video, but it's something impressive that I found out on Facebook, believe it or not. And always check your sources on Facebook. I've, I think there's some false truther accounts that are trying to discredit the truther movement by creating things that seem like, wow, that's that's real evidence of a of a hoax or fraud. And in reality, it's something that someone photoshopped or made. And I do think it is part of a disinfo campaign to make truthers look bad, putting out false information. So always check before you share something with the world, because you never know. You don't want to mislead anyone. But there was an Italian physicist back in the day, over a hundred years ago, doing some things that would be impossible on a globe. And his name was Guglielmo Marconi. I don't know how I missed this bit of information in this story because it's quite impressive. And he was one of the first people to send a signal beyond what we thought was possible. 200 miles was about the limit they thought because with sight distances and elevations, that's about as far as we can see because you hit that horizon, that false horizon. And they, assuming this is the curvature of Earth, said there's no way to send a signal beyond that far because these things, they go in straight lines. So the message that he sent, however, traveled up to 2,000 miles. I believe it was 2,100 miles. But here's the story real quick. And it says, the 22-year-old Marconi, so he was just a kid, and his mother arrived in England in 1896 and quickly found interest in backers, including the British Post Office. Within a year, Marconi was broadcasting up to 12 miles, totally possible on a globe and had applied for his first patents a year later. He set up a wireless station on the Isle of Wight that allowed Queen Victoria to send messages to her son, Prince Edward, aboard the royal yacht. By 1899, Marconi's signal had crossed the English Channel. The same year, Marconi traveled to the U.S., where he gained publicity offering wireless coverage of the America's Cup yacht race from off the coast of New Jersey. Marconi began to work on improving his wireless for a transatlantic broadcast. Many physicists argued that radio waves traveled in straight lines. They were correct, making it impossible for signals to be broadcast beyond the horizon. Also correct if the Earth was curved to the degree that we're told it is. But Marconi believed, this is what I think is kind of funny, believed they would follow the planet's curvature. He believed things traveling in a straight line will follow the curve. I don't know if he really believed that. I haven't seen anything that shows that he literally believed that. That's what it says. In fact, the waves do travel in straight lines, but they bounce off of the ionosphere, approximating a curve. After failed attempts to receive a signal from England on Cape Cod, Massachusetts, Marconi decided to try a shorter distance from Cornwall to Newfoundland. And if you're not familiar with those places, I'll show you on a map what that looks like. But the radio signal broadcast from Poldhu, Cornwall, was so powerful as Marconi's team could make it at full power. The equipment sent out sparks a foot long, some 2,100 miles away atop Signal Hill in St. John's. Marconi attached an antenna first to a balloon, which blew away, and then to a kite on a 500-foot tether. On December 12, 1901, he picked up a faint three-dot sequence the Morse code letter S. So here you have it, 2,100 miles. On a map, looks something like this. Straight line distance. He sent a signal from here to here. That's quite a great distance. But let's look at how much curve would be in between those two places on Earth. So you factor in the elevation of that hill, which is about 500 feet and add the 500 foot tether that he had on the kite that signal of a with a um, target distance of 2100 miles would run into this much curve over two and a half million feet how many miles is that well if you do feet to miles you get about 504 miles over here but i wanted to use a different website one that a baller has made for us to use on metabunk i think mick west is his name so to keep them happy, I will use this website 
and do the same numbers, and I get about 509 miles of curve. So not much difference there. So these two websites, just about five miles, you know, four or five miles apart. But um, 509 miles of curve in between the person here trying to send a radio signal that moves in a straight line here. They're saying, and again, the ionosphere wouldn't be very high if you're looking zoomed out on the Earth, somewhere around here. That signal would just have to keep bouncing. And as it's bouncing off of things and hitting the Earth, it does. It's Earth is not solid sheet of metal to bounce this stuff off of. I mean, this is like Earth. But they're actually shooting it over water. Water would absorb that signal. Not going to bounce off of the ionosphere. Ionosphere is not solid. Okay, so we're told there's a firmament up there. They could have bounced it off the firmament. If the Earth was round and there was a firmament, then, hey, it might be possible. But um, bouncing it off of the ionosphere that far would be impossible. That's 2,100 miles. So definitely something that proves that this signal went in a straight line at a height of about 1,000 feet. There was nothing in between this location and this location that would have blocked that signal. So it made it over the flat surface of the water. Very impressive. Really not sure how I've missed that. I'm sure somebody else has done videos about this. But something to travel in a straight line that far should be one of the most obvious proofs that there's no curvature. The backup story of the ionosphere, it's just one of those things where no matter what you do, there's always, oh, well, it bounced off of this. Oh, well, there's a man-made barrier surrounding Earth. Whatever they tell us, it's always a convenient lie to cover up the truth. The man-made barrier surrounding Earth that I'm talking about, that's something that I came across in the early days of looking into this when scientists detected something that was impenetrable. Of course, that's the follow-up. Oh, it's a man-made barrier. We knew it was there. We spotted it. It's, it's always something like that. No matter what you do, that's what you're going to get. So wanted to share that really quick. There has been some another couple things pop up in the news about asteroids. So And there's some earthquakes that have been happening as well. A lot of things going on showing us that we really are in the last days. There's some things that are far more important than this discussion of missing curve. So I'm going to try to move away from this. This is probably not my last video on this subject. I don't want to ever just say I'm done with all that. But there's, um, there's far more important things with the spiritual battles going on and what we need to do. We really need to walk in the spirit, find out what we need to be doing, because it's urgent that we get everybody ready. Not everybody is going to be open to certain things. I understand that. Don't worry about it, okay? They don't have to believe that the earth is stationary to go and be with the Father. It's going to be really interesting when they see everything for the first time when they get there. But just be warned and understand that the deception's coming are far greater than what we've seen, and the technology to do such things has improved greatly. They are doing a really good job at making us believe whatever they want. And it's worked for most of my life up until now, and I think there's so many of us awake, that's why censorship is what it is. It has to be. We can't keep putting out information and exposing them without them doing something to stop us or try and stop us. And they've slowed us down a little bit. But keep doing what you guys are doing. You guys are awesome. We will be heading out here pretty soon. I will be leaving Monday, going to California. And then from California to New Zealand. And then from New Zealand, eventually to Australia. And if um, you're one of the people wanting to meet up and it's able to meet up, I've, I'm going to keep that information linked in the description here as well. And we have um, an email list that I'm starting. I will try to send to everyone who has reached out to us. If you don't find yourself on an email by Monday, then chances are I missed you. But you can still meet up with us. I will try to keep posting, especially in our community post, the times and everything of where we're going to be meeting up and when. So stay tuned. Hopefully I'll get to see a few of you. It looks like I definitely will get to see a few of you in both of those places. And I really look forward to it. This is uh, bringing a lot of joy 
to me and the family as we travel because this is something new to me. I've never branched out. Not a very social person, believe it or not. <laughs> Even though I'm very brave making videos, I would be terrified if I was speaking in front of all of you in person. I'm very shy. So um, I appreciate you guys for all you're doing, your support, your prayers as we go through with these last days and some of the more important things that we're going to be doing aside from the work we do here. So thank you all for sharing the good news about the love that is out there for everyone in need, the freedom from the slavery that we've all been a part of. So thank you guys for that. You guys, as always, are a beloved creation of the Most High. It's time to make sure everyone else knows that as well. When you pick up the phone to reach out and touch someone across the oceans, it's only possible because of ships like the Global Sentinel. This is cable tank number one. And what am I standing on right now? You're standing on fiber optic cable that's going to be laid from here towards Brazil. E-Connectivity Subcom, which calls itself the world's largest provider of under-ocean fiber optic cable. So the cable we're walking on right now will be under the ocean carrying my phone call? Yes, it will. It's the machines use water jets to create a trench, allowing the cable to sink into the seabed and become buried. 95% of all telephone and data is transferred over submarine cables. Not satellite. Not satellite.